All right, so I can talk about a crock bite. I can talk about a cover bite, but you guys, for the most part, probably know about it. So do you guys want to hear a story nobody's ever heard about before? Yeah. You want to hear about a bite nobody knows about? Yeah. All right, let me tell you about my nightmare. All right, so my good friend Dingo Dinkleman, he really wanted me to have a black mamba for a long time. He's like, do you have a black mamba? And years back, I didn't. This is before Alice and I got that 10-foot black mamba. He was like, oh, let me send you an 8-foot black mamba, crazy wild cut. I'm like, no, I, I, I don't want to die. So let's start small, maybe a baby. Before he could send me a baby, I was able to get the 10-footer. Later on, he sent the baby. I named it Kobe. And uh, before you do it, it went from a three foot long hatchling to seven, eight feet long. Now, the story with black mambas is you never can them. You always use a shift box, something like that. Never use a can. They're arboreal snakes. They shoot out of the can. Most people tell stories about these snakes. They almost get bit in the face. They almost get bit in the ear, the chest, all that stuff. Uh, it's been like four plus years or whatever. Kobe's now seven, eight feet long. I started with canning him, but now he's too big. One day, Duff is spotting me while I'm cleaning venomous reptiles. And uh, this snake, I was using a tool, I actually, believe it or not, use snake hooks quite a lot. And uh, I was using a snake hook with this black mamba, and he flung from the opening of the can, he flew out. His face was right here. Before I could even move, I tried to do a little, little shimmy shove. It didn't work. And uh, right here on the neck, the carotid artery, he bit me, one fang hole, blood coming out. I didn't think that there was blood at first. I'm checking, I'm checking, no blood. I'm like, duck, no blood. And he's like, oh, you're good. And then a second later, Blood's coming out of my carotid artery. I'm like, shit, let's go. And they're like, what do we do? I'm like, bite protocol, rush me to the hospital. It was a dry bite, no venom. Black mambas are not known to do dry bites. I should be dead right now. I called Dingo a day later. I said, Dingo, I was dry bit by Kobe, the black mamba that he gave me. He goes, bro, there's only been two people in the world bit by a dry bit by a black mamba, you're one of them. I'm like, uh. Great, great story. So the moral of the story is don't work with black mob as one. But if you do, use a shift box. Don't can them ever unless you want to meet God quicker. So uh, that's my story. Thank you for letting me uh, share a little bit of PTSD with you guys. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's not on the internet. That's not out there. Maybe in the future I'll release uh, a clip of it and talk about it in like a show or something. But right now, keeping that just in between us. Don't go tell nobody. Keep it a secret. Put those phones down. What are you doing? It's already on Instagram. <laughs> Thanks for listening to us, guys. Why are you guys all quiet? That's it, yeah. Thanks, everybody. It was awesome. Great.